a KQED HD production. San Francisco artist Monica Martinez has used some unusual materials in her artwork, like the mealworms, which inspired these quirky homes for insect tenants. There was a question, uh, what am I going to do with all these mealworms or these edible insects that I was harvesting? Throw a dinner party, of course, with worms and crickets on the menu. The success of her surreal supper motivated Martinez to launch Don Baguito, the nation's first edible insect food cart. There's three types of insects that the Don Baguito presents, the mealworm, the wax moth larva, and the crickets. And these uh, edible insects I usually cook with ingredients that are found in California, but also inspired by pre-Columbian food. Yes, would you like to try one? Martinez premiered her culinary creations at the 2011 San Francisco Street Food Festival. There, intrepid urbanites opened their mouths and minds to crunchy mealworms and plump wax moth larvae. Entomophagy, or the eating of insects, may seem like yet another Bay Area food fad. But 80% of the world regularly eats the most abundant animal life on Earth. Scientists have documented about 1.1 million species of insects. Insects run the gamut from cockroaches all the way to butterflies, to uh, termites, to ants. We know there's about 1,700 species that are edible. That means they're being eaten by local cultures around the world. In Madagascar, these are the most common insects eaten. These are the locusts. They're huge. They're usually super abundant, and they're very good to eat. I prefer them barbecued. The breakfast of champions? Maybe, if you consider how nutritious edible insects are. One reason to eat insects is because they're loaded with protein. In fact, gram for gram, pound for pound, there's as much or more protein in insects than in the comparable pound of hamburger. There's also less fat. A six ounce serving of crickets has 60% less saturated fat than the same amount of ground beef and twice as much vitamin B12. A six ounce serving of mealworms has more protein than ground pork and half the fat. But even if they are nutritious, are insects actually safe to eat? We do have concerns about disease jumping from animals like pigs and cows to humans, but there are no worries about an, a disease jumping from an insect to humans. The more evolutionary distant we are from our food source, the less danger there is. Insects share very little DNA with humans, so it's much safer in terms of diseases than eating cows or a pig, for example. But you can't buy crickets at the grocery store. There are no federal rules to inspect and approve edible insects for human consumption, which makes it tough to build a wide market. Eating insects will always be a niche fad enterprise until there is some sort of regulation. Uh, that, that is definitely a hindrance right now. It took roughly 10 years for the federal government to approve national standards for organic produce. Similarly, it may be years before supermarkets carry certified safe-to-eat insects. I don't think the government ever predicted that they would have to deal with insects as food. In the meantime, chefs like Martinez can order insects from suppliers. She pays roughly $60 for 250 crickets and the same number of wax moth larvae. Martinez has also become a bit of an urban rancher, raising her own herd of mealworms. They hatch from eggs laid by darkling beetles and fatten up on an all-veggie organic diet. All they need is just bran and the carrots to get a water source, and then um, I clean them once a week. They don't need much attention. I can raise um, 500 mealworms in like three months. At six weeks, they're ready to eat. 
Not only is this mini livestock easy to raise, it's also a snap to cook. Monica first freezes her crickets and then pops them into the oven. I like to roast them so uh, they get, you know, a little crunchy. The crickets will be tossed in a salad with pumpkin seeds and lemon vinaigrette, a first course of a meal for friends and fans of her unusual cuisine. I wasn't expecting to be like this, but it was pretty good. Once you get over the fact that they're actually bugs, yeah, I'm surprised at how flavorful the actual crickets are. The wax moth larvae tacos with roasted pasilla peppers and salsa are also a big hit. I'm really shocked, actually. It it's, has the texture almost like of a soft nut, like a chestnut or something. And the flavor is just so vibrant that it just overpowers any I idea, squirming idea I have that it might be something I don't want to eat. Indeed, there is a psychological barrier to munching on something that squirms, creeps, and crawls. Most people that I ask can't even remember where or when they got the idea that insects are gross or bad for some reason. They just have always had it. Daniela Martin loves bugs, especially tasty ones. Hi. She's eaten two dozen kinds of insects, including exotic fare, which would be an acquired taste, even for fellow bug connoisseurs like Norm Gershens. Beautiful. She is spectacular. You know, I've eaten these before. How do they taste? Leafy. <laughs> leafy. Well, there's, there's good reason why. If, if the only thing you ever do is eat leaves, you probably do taste look, a little leafy. Look, she wants me to eat her. <laughs> no offense, sweetie. You just look so tasty. And if leafy-tasting insects don't make your mouth water, perhaps more meaty insects will. Today I'm making seared figs with sautéed grasshoppers and bee larvae, which are kind of like the, you know, the bacon of the insect world. Mm. Many people have a hard time opening their hearts, let alone their mouths, to insects. So Martin tries a hands-on approach to combat bug bias. Freddy is an example of something that looks really, really, really scary, but is in fact harmless. So okay, we're going to put this bug on Anna. Anna, how old are you? Four and three quarters. Four and three quarters. No big deal. Right? Insects are not necessarily just our enemies. Martin also believes that an environmental argument can be made for embracing insects. How many gallons of water does a cow need in order to produce one pound of beef? A thousand gallons of water. Oh, I'm guessing a hundred. Guess how many gallons you need for the same pound of protein from crickets? One. One is correct. Edible insects require much less food, water, and land than livestock, making them a more efficient source of protein. Cows and pigs, they're warm-blooded. When they eat, they have to actually kind of waste a lot of energy producing heat. Insects are cold-blooded. I mean that in the good sense. They don't have to maintain their body heat. So when they eat, they don't waste energy. They convert that directly into, like, protein. In fact, proponents of entomophagy believe that edible insects may prove vital to global food security by improving access to protein for those most in need of it. Can we have all 7 billion people on Earth going shopping and buying hamburger? That's not going to happen. There's not enough land to produce the soy or to graze the cattle on Earth. Western diets are being adopted in developing countries. And that's the problem. If Western cultures don't adopt insect eating, it'll be very hard to convince a developing country to really scale up insect eating. Perhaps making edible insects more of an ingredient instead of a main course would widen their taste appeal in the West. To become more widely accepted, edible insects need a better marketing campaign. I would like to see muffin mixes that you can buy that have cricket flour in them. Protein bars, for instance, would be perfect. Before, it was hard for the Western culture to eat raw fish. And then, you know, now you, you find a sushi restaurant in, you know, every neighborhood. 
So I had a feeling that in, in 10 years, you will be able to find edible insects in the supermarket. Thank you so much. Thank you. One bite at a time, bug-eating aficionados are converting the squeamish and gaining confidence that more people will eventually accept mealworms with their meals.